But father, I don't want to get a job. No, I bet you don't. I want to go out to town. Jeremy says I can do a few hours in his gallery while I work on some projects I have in mind. But you absolutely must keep up my allowance. Not likely. You can have an allowance only if you get a proper job learning the business. You're not going to waste your time and my money being papped at parties by old hell magazine. You want an allowance from me, you'll do the job I say. I've got to buy another engine. Again. Oh, if we carry on like this, we'll need to shed the size of the Millennium Dome. Can't we just borrow one? That's getting tricky. My friends with their own layouts can be divided into two groups. Those with caller ID, who are mysteriously always unavailable, and those with a good line and excuses. Last week, my friend Richard claimed all his engines were suffering from Pendolino. Apparently, Mallard has H5N1. Look, boss, I know it's painfully expensive, but we've got to have a reserve engine. We've no resilience at the moment. As soon as one engine goes down, we're losing money and wrecking our reputation. Cornishville's calling long-term sick. Ponta Trelawney? What's the matter with him? Frostbite. Says his feet have gone black. Again. Well, well, it's that time of year again. Phil's taken his boots off. If we could just persuade the grimy devil to get into the shower, we might find his symptoms wash off. He has noticed that cold dust is black. He's not our most intellectual employee. Okay. Replacement engine. Replacement for dim idler. I'll get on to it. Well, Reggie, the Little Western will be here in just a few minutes. It was an absolute bargain. But there's a catch. What is it, and why do I suddenly have the feeling that it's a catch that I'm going to have to field? Well, you're not wrong. I thought you were the only man for the job. We got the train cheap from Sir Clarence Porter on the condition that we take his son Max with it. He must be a colossal waste of space. Now, now, give him a chance. He's next to a pair of hands. How bad can that be? Well, huh, there she is. I hope she gives you as much good service and pride of ownership as she's given me. And that youth, who looks as if he'd have to toughen up to become merely a drip, is my son Max. Do your best to keep him on track. As I told you, he doesn't want to be here. But he knows that if he gets himself sacked, he loses his allowance. And he'll have to find himself a job that pays a lot more than anyone in their right mind will pay him. That should give you a chance to beat him into shape. Just remember, the train's cheap because you have to make a railwayman of him. Porter, if it can be done, I'll do it. He could fire an engine and raise steam when he was 14. It was after that the rot set in. But he should be able to pick it up again fairly quick. Reggie, take Max to meet the crew. All right, you lot. This is Max. He's just joined us. Max, fancy a cuppa? Yes, Earl Grey, please. Earl Grey? Didn't I fire him on the Great Western? I don't think he's talking trains. And two lumps of sugar, please. You can usually find some lumps in the sugar bag. Wet spoons. We need to shunt the coaches way for the one o'clock train. We'll take the Little Western out for that. Then we'll do some practice driving up and down the sidings. Oh, here's your tea. Mmm, <coughs> unusual flavour and certainly not Earl Grey. What is it? Tetley. Is it Indian or Ceylonese? It's not foreign. They grow it up north somewhere. Good British tea! Okay, by now you must know all the controls on this engine. So, let's see how well you can buffer up those coaches in the sidings. Alright, here goes. Careful! That always happened when I practice at home! You mean to say you practice driving badly? You didn't need to. 
He tried Barry without having to practice at all. Now, open the regulator slowly. Ease it open until we get to a reasonable speed. Careful now, the points are still against us. Whistle to Larry to change the point, and then go and ready. What are you doing? Stop! Uh-oh. Bugger! I said I was sorry! I know that, but it's exactly what I've been telling you. Always listen to the instructor. Just be glad the train had already gone through before the derailment, otherwise we'd really have been in for it. You know, we could really do the steam crane. Yep. Still, Mr. Crockery does a reasonable job. Sign me out, would you, Stan? So, how's Max been? Pain in the ass? You don't want to do anything if it means getting dirty. He won't even break up wood for the sawdust. Huh. This is the railway. The point of working here is to get covered in soot, paint, coal dust, water, mud, tea, coffee, milk, chocolate, dessert. No surrealism. What's going on? Kevin told me to clean the ash pan. That means getting dirty. Let her and have one of the staff do it. <sighs> Keep doing that till you feel it's clean. Do you think he'll get it done? He wants to get paid, he will. How are ya? To be quite honest, I ache really badly. Work must have come as a shock to your muscles. So, what's happening today? You're gonna be my fireman. I beg your pardon? You're a qualified fireman. You've got three trains today, non-stop from Top Shed Station. You're firing them. There's certainly eight tomorrow. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to be taught how to drive diesels, like the Metroliner. Only those trusted at high speeds may drive the Metroliner. Being an experienced railwayman, I'm one of the few. Ooh, look at Captain Modesty. Any sign of life? Yes, you've got the flag. Right away! I don't see why I need to be a steam raver and fireman before I can become a driver. Well, there are three reasons. Firstly, you do much more around the line and must be rostered more often. Secondly, if the fireman were to have a heart attack or fall from the cab, the driver would keep up steam. After all, if you're dead or so stupid you fall off trains, what use are you? And thirdly, if either of the crew make a mistake, the other can tell them they're crap. Nice. Speaking of which, just keep up steam! Well, Max, I now know two things about your firing capabilities, which are... Firstly, you can keep up steam if shouted out loudly enough. And secondly, much of what you shovel will end up on the cab floor. Maybe we should have the fire hole enlarged. Hmm. Since you can keep steam reasonably well, you can light up 317 on Thursday. Oh no! I need my beauty sleep! You're obviously already behind by a couple of years, lad. Can't me, I'll do it! He has Thursday mornings off. I normally light up for him, but since you're here to learn, you can do it. Oh, bother. Well, Max, you're here on time. I didn't expect that. Uh, uh...
Well, where's everything I need? Wood's here, rags in the shed, coals in the tender, and the diesel oil's in the tank out back. Fancy some tea? It's either Tetley or PG Tips. I think I might try the latter. Sounds exotic. Oh, good lord! Reggie! Reggie! Jesus Christ! What should I do? Okay, calm down. Put it on the end of a shovel and take it away from the shed. Let it burn itself out. Okay, careful. Being very careful. Mustn't trip over. Mustn't do anything to cause any more trouble! Operation! Reggie! Now oh, what happened? No, wait, don't tell me I'll call the fire service! Emergency services, which service do you require? The fire service, please! Now who needs the fire service? Fire on the desk about the engine shed! All present and correct, sir. Right! Let's go! They're on their way! They'd better hurry or the shed will catch fire! The shed has caught fire! Okay everyone, action stations! Right everyone, let's pack up and go home. The building suffered no structural damage, so it should be safe to enter. Thanks. Oh, that's enough training for today. You look like you're in shock. And we only have a limited number of buildings left. So, what do you think? Accident or arson? Well, either way, sir, it was someone very, very naughty. From what I've seen and heard, we might not be able to afford to keep him on. He's a walking disaster area! <sighs> well, boss, I can't pretend he's doing well. He's not interested in being here, and he's not getting better. But, he's not without promise. If we could just find a way to motivate him, I think he'd shape up okay. Sir Max, how are you this morning? I think I've just about recovered from the unpleasant incident. Good to hear. Now, I think we'll have an easy day today. We'll take little Weston up to City Line Station so he can meet the staff and have a look at the setup there. Ow, my nose! Sorry! Okay, Max. This is Danny. He's one of the porters here. Hello. How'd you do? This is Doug, Station Master. Morning. Yes, hello. This is Smithy. He's in charge of the ticket office. Nice to meet you. Hello. And this is Stephanie. She runs the cafe. Hello, charmed to meet you. I'd show you Top Hat's office upstairs, but he tends to lock it when he's away. He's got some pretty important stuff up there. Finances, computer, radio equipment, you know. Sit yourself down, I'll get the teas in. So how's it going then, Max? Not brilliantly, if I'm honest. No? We heard you were really saying this place alike. Yes, well... Leave him alone, guys. We all make mistakes when we started too. Yeah, someone nearly once drove a train clean off the edge of the desk. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, well, as I say, even the best of us make mistakes. It wasn't the best of us, it was you. Stephanie seems nice. Does she have a boyfriend? <laughs> um, not as far as we know. She's a very choosy young woman. All the lads are interested in her, but she's not interested in them. She's got ambition. 
and she's only going to hook up with a lad who's ambitious himself. That leaves this bunch of wasters with no hope. Found the motivator for Max. Explosives? Big stick with rusty nail? No, boss. The oldest motivator of all. Ah, yes. The stark choice between starvation and being fatally wounded by a wild animal. Uh, close enough. Well, Max, you've done incredibly well again today. I haven't had a nosebleed in a week, and Mr. Crockett phoned up to ask if we sacked you. Maybe you're finally making progress. My dad is always interested in his trains, and I must say they're growing on me too. Hey Neon, you signing off? Yeah, remember it's Larry's retirement party tonight? The signal one? Oh, I forgot that! You gonna be there, Max? Maybe. Stephanie's going. When's it start? 7.30 at the Railwayman's Gloves. I'll see you then. Fancy a cuppa? Two sugars. Well, Max, I reckon the 46,000 exactly what we need for the line. It's a great steamer, strong, and it sounds bloody good. Personally, I think you could do with an SDR engine. 60XX, perhaps? How I long to drive one of those. Beautiful little engines, they are. Have you guys seen Neon? He owes me a point. Hey there, darling. You like jewelry? Ow! <laughs> Punched a full punchline. She likes me. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Now, if I could have your full attention, I'd like to welcome to the stage the man of the hour, Larry Thompson. Hi everyone, thanks for coming to see me off. Well, what can I say? 40 years of railway work, 17 of them here on the desk railway. But now, it's time to go. Thailand and my new bride away. Way! Where I plan to take up the hobbies of my youth. Downhill skiing and bobsleigh. How much research has he done? I may be the last ever signal on the railway. As of tomorrow, my replacement's a computer. Sign of the times, really. I gained a lot of enjoyment from computers, but I never thought I'd be replaced by one. Let's hope it works out for the best. Thanks for all the memories. Oh, and still a full pack tea mug. Well, that was interesting. You want another pint? I'll have a practice for X. Oh, I'm just off to have a quick word with Stephanie. Good luck. So then he says, I'll do it in the style of Muhammad Ali, and slams the guy in the face! <laughs> <laughs> Did you know, Soylent Green is actually Moroccan black that's gone off, and that's so tragic they made a whole movie about it? D. Alright boy, it's closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can stay here. Let me guess, you've had more than six pints. To be exact, ten. I'm surprised you haven't got alcohol poisoning. Still, you're working on your cirrhosis. Hey, you're my best mate, you are. I love you, man. And I'm not a puff. Well, I'll see you in the morning. Shall never kneel before the Skeletor. Casey Jones. And would you believe it? No hangover. Are you impervious to the effect of alcohol or something? Very probably. Anyway, I'm going down the offie. Want anything? Cornetto. Morning Reggie! Morning Red! How's Neon? No hangover as usual. He's God's gift to the bring industry. He'll catch up with him eventually. He can't see as far as eventually. Oh well. 
See ya! Morning, Reggie. We've almost got steam up. Brilliant. By the way, what happened last night? I saw you talking to Stephanie, then I didn't get a chance to see you afterwards. Did you ask her out? Yep. But she blew me off. Seriously? Why? She said I was the Paris Hilton of the railways. A rich waster who wouldn't amount to anything without Daddy's money. Harsh. But not completely unfair. Reggie, help me prove her wrong. You gotta do it yourself, lad. Prove you're a real railway man. Hi Max, good luck on your test today. Thanks. You'll do fine, man. Just so long as you don't get TK, Max. Hey, TK Max? There's nearly a joke in that. Who's TK? The chief examiner, Thor Kimada. The last bloke he passed was driving Stevenson's rocket. Well, Max, it's judgment day. Please, I'm nervous as hell. Oh, don't worry. I remember the day of my exam. What happened on that? As soon as I stopped the train, I leaned out the cab and threw me guts up. Nice. Passed, of course. Let's hope you do as well. Well, if I'm to do the same as you, where's a sick bucket? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, where is one? Oh no. It's TK! You weren't expecting me, were you? No one expects... Hang on, I'm going off at a tangent. Ah, oh, here's Max. Hello, Mr. Porter. I'm Thor Kamada, Chief Examiner. Your examination begins now. To start off, I'd like to see you oil the big ends. Well, that was adequate. Now, I'll ride with you in the cab, observing your technique. Reggie, I don't know if I can do this. Just take deep, slow breaths. And remember, you're doing this to prove yourself a railwayman. Okay? Okay. Let's go get the coaches. Surprisingly, you have yet to fail. Let's see what you can do wrong in the main examination. I'll keep a lookout, alright? Go for it. Right away! This is it. Don't get another engine round to tow where the other stock. Mr. Crockett won't be able to rerail it unless we do. What could have happened? That new signaling equipment! It controls the points! 
don't think it must have gone wrong with it. I told Larry it wouldn't hurt in the Sigma one. What happened? Ah, uh, could it get any worse? That could be a yes! What are you going to do now then, Porter? The malfunction must have only affected these points. It's all clear for other trains. How are you going to stop the train? Of course! Radio! What on earth? This is an emergency. I need to use your radio equipment. Are you Aegis City Line? Over! Stop the train as fast as you can! The main line has been fouled! Oh bugger! Here it comes! Oh, thank God! You did it, Max! You stopped the train just in time! Yes, well, I believe I've seen enough for one day. And, I'm afraid that even though you derailed the train, I must pass you as a driver. God help us all! Hey! We're gonna have to do something about that new signaling system though. Yes, where are we gonna find someone to replace it? Tonkin's skiing in Thailand with that Ling Ling woman. Replacement for HAL 9000 signaling system. Well, I got a date. Well done, lad! Just don't blow it. Leon will give you some advice. Make sure you ignore every word of it. Well, Sir Clarence, what do you think? Have we managed to change your boy? I think you might have managed to introduce him to the real world, Hat. Thanks for your efforts. I'll take him back off your hands now. I think he's got another challenge to occupy him. He certainly has. We will draw the order Max and Stephanie's relationship beyond this point. Soon after, Little Western entered full service. It surprised all of the crews with its strength, and it was highly enjoyed by the visitors. In fact, it was so popular that Top had raised the funds for another tank engine, and with the funds from now. No, I can't tell you. There isn't really anything else to tell. Thus, the trouble with train series comes to an end. And what is the trouble with trains? Well, it's generally people. But fortunately, the solution to those problems... Well, that too is people. Maybe one day, we'll return to the desk railway. For now, the boilers remain silent, the tank's empty, and the firebox is cold. Yeah.